The TurtleBot 4 is one of the most popular open source robotics platforms for education and research. However, the hardware nature of the robot, overviewed in our previous video, has introduced two issues that are not easy to solve. Have you ever requested the TurtleBot 4 topics only to find an incomplete or empty topic list? Have you ever experienced a red light indicating a full memory requiring a robot restart? The solution we propose is running the TurtleBot's computing units in two separate ROS domain IDs and connecting them through Zeno. This will alleviate the network traffic that causes these two problems. Hi, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the TurtleBot's DDS network discovery issues and why they present a problem in terms of communication and memory. You will walk away from this video with a tangible solution for both of these issues and experience improvements immediately. Best of all, the solution is only two lines of code. So let's get started. ROS2 uses the DDS network protocol as its underlying message transport architecture. DDS is a data-centric middleware communication protocol. A ROS2 node is called a participant in a DDS context. There can be other participants, like a pure DDS app or a discovery participant, all pulling data from the same stream. DDS is very reliable in performance and real-time capabilities, and it has been widely adopted by many industries like aerospace, defense, and automotive. However, problems can arise when transitioning to a wireless DDS network if not configured correctly. DDS uses multicast communication as a decentralized approach. This is how a participant can share data with a selected number of other participants. Remember that when talking about a TurtleBot 4, it has two devices inside, the Raspberry Pi and the Create 3. However, before data can be shared with these selected participants, all other participants must be aware of every other participant in order to be able to start sharing data. This is known as the DDS participant discovery phase. This is true even if two participants don't end up sharing data. They must still send RTPS discovery packets to each other. Multiply this by every device in the network, you start to see the compounding traffic. The more participants, like ROS2 nodes, the more data the TurtleBots Create 3 must process. Since it has a limited PC, the Create 3 will often overload with more complex applications, like NAV2. This is why sometimes the robot's light turns red and the robot must be restarted. This also makes the scenario of not enough time for the discovery process to complete possible, resulting in an incomplete ROS2 topic list. If you want to learn more about DDS, make sure to take our course DDS for Robotics at The Construct. In it, you will learn how DDS works for ROS2 based robots and solve DDS real world problems when your robotic system is not working. Find the link in the description down below. In order to solve these issues, we propose isolating the Create3 in a different ROS domain ID and use two Zeno bridges in order to connect the Raspberry Pi and the Create3, all while protecting the Create3 CPU and even blocking unnecessary data from ever flowing into it. By isolating the Create3, we make sure only the necessary topics are arriving or leaving. In every other aspect, the Create 3 is in another domain or world, so there is no danger of overloading it. Our solution is divided in three steps. One, configure two parameters in the Raspberry Pi. Two, configure two parameters in the Create 3. And three, pull and run a Docker image. Let's now configure the Raspberry Pi. So let's SSH into our TurtleBot. 
remember the default username is Ubuntu, you haven't changed it. And uh, the IP address is actually in the little screen of the TurtleBot right here. So that's where you can check it. And if you haven't set up your Wi-Fi in your TurtleBot yet, make sure to check out our previous video. So we input the IP address. And once inside, we're going to run the TurtleBot 4 setup tool. So in here, we're going to go into raw setup and then bash setup. Here are the parameters. Uh, remember, no robot namespace can be anything or empty. And the first thing is the ROS domain ID. Default is zero. We're going to keep it at zero. So it's probably already at zero. But if not, we need to change it. And the RMW implementation. I think the default is fast RTPS. So this one we will have to change to Cyclone DDS. So make sure we change that. And then the last thing is to make sure this Cyclone DDS URI is empty. So nothing in here. And we're going to hit save. Then we go back with escape and we will apply our settings. And here you can see that uh, it's going to be changing uh, the implementation and uh, a note that any of these changes to this ROS domain ID, your namespace or your RMW implementation, which we did change, will cause uh, the TurtleBot 4 to apply the settings to the Create 3 as well. Later in the next step, we're actually going to override a couple of these settings in the Create 3. So we just We'll click yes and uh, wait for the process to complete. It's actually going to reboot. So uh, in a little bit, actually, this is done. The process is done. So we, you can hear a little click uh, that the TurtleBot kind of restarted. And later you'll hear the Create 3 chime. Let's begin with the Create 3. So now that we've configured the Raspberry Pi, let's move on to uh, the Create 3 to override some settings. And we're going to open up the web server by opening the port 8080 with the same IP address for your TurtleBot 4. So now we're inside the web server and we're going to go to application and then configuration. And in here, we'll see the ROS2 domain ID, which was uh, modified before with our TurtleBot 4 setup tools, but we actually want it different. We want to put it uh, on the ROS domain ID one. Uh, and since the TurtleBot 4 setup tools already changed our RMW implementation in our Create 3, we don't have to change it. Just make sure it's selected. Cyclone DDS CPP and again namespace it can be whatever you want so once you have the one in the ROS domain ID and Cyclone in the RMW implementation we can hit save and then restart the application and we'll wait for the chime let's move on to the docker image so in case you don't have Docker installed, you can go to install Docker engine on Ubuntu. The link for this page is down below. This is Docker docs. And all you have to do is follow these instructions, which are very simple. The first thing is to uninstall conflicting packages you might have. So you copy this and paste it on your TurtleBot. Then you use the apt repository for Docker, this command here, and then install the latest version this command here and that's it you can then test with a hello world docker uh, very simple all you got to do is paste these on your turtlebot 4 okay and after you have it installed we're going to go to docker hub and in here we're going to look up the construct ai So we see one image pop up, the Zeno Bridge ROS2 DDS image by the construct. 
and this image runs two Xeno bridges for the TurtleBot 4 to improve discovery and multi-robot setups. That's the one we want. So let's click on it. And here you'll see the requirements, which is what we just did by configuring the Create 3 and the Raspberry Pi. Well, the other way. First Raspberry Pi, then Create 3. And then we provide you with the Docker Composium, which is the easiest way to uh, run this container. So I already have it in here. So basically the important part is that we're going to do a network mode host to share the network with the system. And we're gonna say restart always, that's it. So once you have it on your TurtleBot, all you need to do is uh, docker compose up minus D. So you can go to the directory it's at and just type docker compose up minus D. Minus D is for detached. So we can see that it has started and that's it. That's all you need to do. And to finish up, all we need to do is restart the TurtleBot 4. So uh, how we're going to do that is just hold the power button until we hear the sound and then use the charger, just placing it on top again. And that's it. We'll wait until it boots and uh, then our solution will be implemented. Let's demonstrate the improvements by accessing the robot and moving it around. First, let's see how quickly the ROS2 topic list appears. This is the complete list and it will always show up. So let's echo a topic that comes from the Create3, for example, the odometry. Here we can see the message and then we can echo one from the Raspberry Pi, for example, the LiDAR scan. There it is. We see messages from both the Create3 and the Raspberry Pi. Now, you've probably experienced issues with the robot's actions, specifically the dock and undock actions. Let's undock it to see how responsive it is. Very quickly. Uh, and we can also move the robot around and we should see no appreciable delay. Finally, let's dock the robot again and we should see a response as soon as the robot reaches the charging dock. There it is. As you can see, the response of the robot is perfect with our Zeno container running. Done! Your TurtleBot 4 is now running a Zeno bridge container, which uses the Zeno network protocol to share DDS data between the Raspberry Pi and the Create 3 of your robot. Remember, to test that it's working, reboot the robot, and then request the ROS2 to topics, services, and actions. You'll notice an improvement in discovery and response time. You can now move the robot, dock it, undock it, check its LiDAR and its camera without ever having to worry about not seeing topics or maxing out the Create3 memory. Thank you for watching our solution for the TurtleBot Force discovery and memory issues. Stay tuned for the next video in this series in which I will show you how to set up two or more TurtleBot 4s with the NAV2 stack. And don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on for the next video of the series. See you next time.